Hey, welcome back to the Ready State. One of the things we're going to talk about today is which movements are foundational. So when you ask people, what are the things you got to do, what you'll hear is a lot of language of push and pull, maybe a couple planes. And what I want to do is tell you how we think about when we walk into someone's program and they're asking us to help evaluate their programming, we end up looking at shapes. We end up looking at patterns. And that should be completely comfortable for you guys in this modern age of Gray Cook and everyone else and the language of uh, CrossFit and functional training and Olympic lifting. But if we're a little more granular about it, we always identify four positions of the shoulder. There are four key shoulder shapes. And of course, your shoulder does a whole lot of other things, but these end up being what we call the movement vital signs. So we have used the word archetype, arc, a type, in the past, but now I want to make sure that you understand that these are movement vital signs. So how do I know if my body can do what it's supposed to do? Well, I already have a program. It's called Pilates, it's called yoga, it's called gymnastics, it's called Olympic lifting, which are really expressions of normative physiology. So if I'm looking at four shoulder shapes, one of those functional movement vital signs is overhead. So if we take this overhead shape, for example, we know that full range of motion is this position. So this is overhead, this is overhead, this is still overhead, but fullest expression is can I hold a dumbbell, armpit forward, thumb back, no bend in the elbow, this would be my overhead position. Okay, so we understand what the roots are around what I value as key shape to being normal physiology, full power physiology. But what's nice about that is that we can begin then to say, well, if this is true, what movements in your program express this overhead position? And then suddenly you're like, oh, press, push press, push jerk, handstand push up, strict pull up, kettlebell snatch. Right? You start to see that unless you're pushing and programming those overhead movements, and that's, that's not so crazy for you. Like that, you should be able to make that jump. So when you're looking at your programming, you can see the movements in there and begin to ask, well, what we're doing is we're planning on that overhead shape. Now, we can push and we can pull. So we can further break that down. Instead of a push-pull, what we've got is approximation or distraction force. So I'm either loading through that line or I'm pulling through that line. That's really the heart and soul of a push and pull. So you can further break that down. Are we only pushing into overhead or do we ever spend time pulling from overhead? Okay, is this always closed chain or is it always open chain? Am I always in this shape or am I programming a closed chain exercise like a push jerk, like a dumbbell heaving jerk or a heaving snatch? Right? Am I doing a handstand push-up? Am I going from open chain to closed chain? Or am I able to express some good closed chain exercise like a handstand push-up? So what ends up happening is then I can say, hey, we know that according to the ready state, we've got four movement positions, movement vital signs for this overhead position, or for, for the shoulder. Overhead's one of them. Is it a pulling force or pushing force, compression or distraction? And are we open chain, closed chain? We can also start to drop down into, well, do I have to manage all the rotation with like a dumbbell or am I in a closed system like a, like a barbell? We've talked about that in the past, that closed torque, open torque idea. So then you can start to say, oh, okay, I'm getting comfortable with this overhead position. So we'll just put press as our holder here, right? So unless my athletes are the people I'm working with, if I'm talking about building resilient shoulders, I guarantee you don't have resilient shoulders if you don't expose your athletes to these positions. And that may be even in uncompensated positions. I got guys who are, who are bomber, right? Don't have overhead positions. I don't want to compensate. And I think largely when we end up running into people who have been afraid to load their overhead athletes, like pitchers, for example, it's because those coaches cleverly realized that when they put their athletes into overhead positions that were highly compensated, unstable, moving towards less function, with more compensation, that that didn't express stability and it didn't express and make them better at their jobs, better at their throwing, right? And if you're a pitcher, you understand, if you don't throw pies, right? This position is a weak position, this is a strong position. So all these things end up mattering. So overhead, 
We've got press, that makes sense. We know you've got to spend some time in that front rack shape. Another moving vital sign in this long lever, short lever position. So no wonder we spend so much time in plank. That's one of the reasons that movement literacy has come to include planking in the top of the push-up as a base operation because this long lever mid-range front rack shape turns out to be really crucial and good for athletes. It's why old coaches say things like, I like bench press, it ties the arms to the body because it teaches stability and control when those arms are out in front of me, right? And you're thinking, I'm a rower, this is your catch position on rowing, so you better have competency in this position. So you can see in this front rack suddenly, either long lever or short lever, that this ends up being the start position for a lot of my pressing. So we end up touching a lot of our shapes as we're just moving through our daily language. So we've got our front rack, which could be expressed as a front squat, right? We've got a front squat here. But you can also see plank in this position. <clears throat> and what's nice now is that this would also be the start position for a handstand push-up. If I would be starting in this plank shape. So a short lever uh, front rack shape. So we can start to look at your program and say, well, are you spending time in this position? Start position for bench. We also know that we're at some point, we're gonna be into one of our movement vital signs, which we call our press archetype, which means the shoulder is gonna to have to come in extension. And what you're thinking to yourself is, well, I'm a runner, I don't need to bench, but your arm does swing back when you run. This is how that whole fascia and system and lat becomes loaded. Right? This is how I mechanically stabilize myself during my runs. That impulse through the lat is crucial. It's not an arm swing that matters. It's this impulse through the lat. But even if I'm a swimmer, my ability to get into this position or get up off the ground in chaturanga and yoga starts with this shoulder extension shape. So even if I'm not doing long lever positions like skin the cat or table, I am spending a lot of time in this bottom position. So that would be the bottom position of the bench or push-up, right, chaturanga. You're gonna see the finished position for rowing. So am I exposing my athletes to a push and a pull from this position? A ring row is a great example of starting from a front rack position and finishing in this press shape, a pulling distraction force into this press archetype, not always pushing archetype, right? And the last one is what we call our hang shape. And this hang movement vital sign is where my, I'm gripping something from the ground and pulling. It's this rotation. Now, of course, the bo body needs to be able to move in all of these ranges, but we identify this as a vital sign because it's the bottom, it's the position where I would pull in my Olympic lifts. It's my arms coming through when I swim. So you can see we've got high pull. We've got swim here as I pull through. Right? We've also got the bottom position of a kettlebell swing, but instead of short lever, it's in a long lever. So you're going to see that your kettlebell swing is here. And it's crucial that our athletes have these shapes because we do a lot of necessitating rotation in these bottom positions to be stable and controlled. This position is really just a corner of the press shape, or excuse me, of the hang shape. This hang movement vital sign. So, with the four shoulder shapes, which we call archetypes, which are shorthand for these are the book ends of your physiology that we think are important, you'll see that wrapped in all of the modern strength and conditioning language are these key shapes and positions, these vital signs, and then suddenly the movements associated with them are your choice. So if you like to use kettlebells or maces, great. If you like to bench press and Olympic lift, great. But if you're missing one of these shapes, you probably have an incomplete program. If you're not exposing the full movement capacity of that movement vital sign, I know that you're missing possibility and potential.